I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com, and this is the Newbie Tank Build Series starring the newbie, that's Jimmy. But where is Jimmy? Well, he's not here. He's deep in his mixing station build. And between you and me, I think he got in a little bit above his head. See, I told him to hire a plumber for the connections between the house water line and the sink, but he said he wanted to try it on his own. So, he gets to figure that out. And this is a great time to pause and talk about fish for Jimmy's tank and think about fish for your saltwater tank. Now, some of you are gonna say, he doesn't have his tank set up. There's no water in it. Why are we talking about fish at this point? For a couple really good reasons. Number one, as you're planning out your fish wish list and you have your list, every fish isn't immediately available. So you may want a certain fish, but it's seasonal or you don't see it at your local fish store or at saltwateraquarium.com as in stock. Now, certainly I'm not encouraging you to buy all the fish at once and put them into your tank. So part of the process may be waiting and then when you see it in stock, you can get it. But if you don't know what you're looking for, you're not gonna know to grab it when you do see it in stock. The other important part of stocking your saltwater tank is quarantine. I recommend any fish that goes into your saltwater tank gets quarantined. You don't wanna bring into it a disease into your tank, especially a new tank. So even if Jimmy's tank was ready today, we wouldn't just be chunking fish in there. He's gotta get the fish, he's gotta quarantine them, so we've got some time ahead of us before the tank is ready for the fish and before the fish are ready for the tank. You don't wanna set up your new saltwater tank and be like, all right, I gotta wait a couple weeks until the fish I want are in stock, and then I gotta get them, and then I gotta quarantine them. I like to put fish in there quickly in the right process. We'll talk about that in the video series. And if you got some time ahead of yourself before your tank is ready, let's use that to your advantage. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Jimmy and talk about fish for his saltwater tank. Hey, Jordan. Hey, good to see you, man. Good to see you. You're welcome. So uh, last time when we first met, I came down to ORA with Mark to right. make video about uh, all your aquaculture and all the cool things you guys do. But you know, when I was there, I just have headphones on and I'm just listening to like audio quality. But you know, now I have my first aquarium. Mm. So can you help me out? Tell me what are some good Absolutely. starter fish. I'd love to get started with that. It's right. so exciting. All right, it well, is. Obviously, some of the best things for you to do, clownfish, right? Here's a perfect example of over 30 varieties and different color forms. We've got oranges, we've got reds, we've got white and black. You've got an entire palette of color to choose from. Can I get one with like a short fin? Like, we, we, like can try, we can try to find you one. <laughs> so, so clownfish are good. I mean, do they need like a sea anemone? They don't. That's what's the best part. You can have an entire display without an enemy. All right. Now, some of these other fish, let's say you got your, you've, you've chosen your clownfish. What's next? Uh, chalk bass. I don't know if you know what those are, but they're <laughs> just a delightful little Caribbean species. Well, I know what a bass is when I go fishing in oh, Minnesota. Oh, these little guys are way too small for that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we've got them right here. Uh, this is a cool little fish, some blue, some magenta. Uh, peaceful, does well in groups. Now, they do are a very much more open water swimmer fish. You're going to see them all the time. They're a great little fish to uh, get things moving in there. Now, if I, if I go on uh, saltwateraquarium.com to, to order these up, are this about the size that I would get? Right, so a lot of these fish are pretty representative of the sizes that we ship out. Usually about anywhere from an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half. That big? Yeah, that's cool. How fast do they grow? Depends on the size of your aquarium. Sometimes with a large aquarium, they'll grow real fast. Smaller aquariums, they'll tend to slow down just a little bit. Okay, because the saltwater aquarium's still all brand new to me. You know, the mistake I made when I very first had an aquarium, the first time I got fish, I just went into like uh, Walmart or something. I'm like, that looks cool, that looks cool. And I got like an African cyclid. Oh, and then you I mixed got them. The, oh, Disaster? They ate each other. Yes. I mean, they chased each other around. I'm like, oh, what did I do? Two clownfish will be just fine. You add any more than that, you're gonna run into a very similar situation. Really? Yes. Well, I've got 200 gallons. Mm. So, I mean, I'm thinking I'm gonna start with like 20 fish, do uh, I not do that? Uh, I wouldn't recommend you start with that many clownfish. Now there's a number of fish you can add uh, that will get along, the blennies, the gobies, the clownfish, but I wouldn't add that many clownfish all at one time. It usually I, doesn't work okay. out. Okay, and I saw them when we, we were down there, you had cleaning crews. Right. Do I need a cleaning crew to you know, start? I wouldn't say to start, but as you get going, absolutely. So we will have everything to cover all the bases uh, once your tank gets rolling and has all the things that are needed uh, to keep invertebrates going as well. Okay, so if I do the invertebrate 
cleaner crew. I actually had in Saltwater Aquarium, there's like a, a package that says it comes with this, this, and this. Yeah. It's you got peppermint shrimp, I'm assuming. You're probably gonna have turbo snails, asteria snails, serrat snails. Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> Mark is operating the camera. Hey, there's Mark. So, so uh, he's like, yes, we're gonna have that. What did you say before we started, Mark? Don't talk about damselfish. Oh. If this guy recommends a tank full of damsels, you're gonna watch me just knock some money out. Oh. <laughs> but there are some good damsels out there, though. So right. no one ever. But I will tell you, there are some, like the regal damsels, the azure damsels we've got in the tank over there. They're a stunning fish, very, very beautiful, and not nearly as obnoxious. So I don't want to make Mark's mistakes and put diseased fish oh, in my tank. Mark, why? <laughs> so as I introduce new fish, right? do I have to... I have to quarantine them? Now, I always like to recommend everyone quarantine everything. I think it's just a great habit to get into, including aquacultured animals. Okay, so I don't have a quarantine tank. Um, and I'm sorry if this is a stupid question, but I have a sump and stuff. Can I have like a quarantine inside my cabinet? No, a quarantine needs to be a completely separate system from your main display. Now I have to get another tank? <laughs> Now, that being said, uh, if you order from saltwateraquarium.com, our animals are coming from our clean facility and going straight to your home. So there's no mixing of wild type fish uh, at any point. Uh, so if you, if you absolutely had to get away from uh, not having a quarantine, an aquacultured animal would be your best bet. Okay. Especially if it's coming direct from us to your home. So again, another is, might be kind of dumb question, but a quarantine tank, is it just another small little saltwater tank? It's a small, very simple tank. 20 okay, gallons, 50 gallons. Okay, because I thought it'd be cool to have something in my bedroom. Okay, well, So if I put it in it. my bedroom, I could, have, I could quarantine my fish there. You can. Then, okay. Small little hang on the back filter, some PVC. Oh, if so nothing else, just to observe and make sure your fish are uh, you know, recuperating after their travel. Well, see, that's the other thing that uh, I'm really excited about is I really, I don't want to say that I never want to have you know, something captured from the ocean. Right. But I kind of don't want to have anything captured from the ocean. All, I get that. You know, I mean, the hobby's been around a long time. It just right. seems like at this point, I, when I saw your facility, you have you have everything. Well, right, and we also, we can't exist without the wild caught industry. I mean, yeah. we have to start with wild caught broodstock for one. Of course, of course. Right, so, uh, but, and there's also fish that just aren't attainable yet uh, as a captive bred specimen. Yeah. You know, it's only I mean, you can have a, a very beautiful display with only aquacultured animals. All right, yeah, that's that's how I'll start for sure. Yeah, well, this is some great information. How about uh, corals? Corals, yeah. There's a lot of coral corals out there. A lot of different options to start with. Now, obviously, you're gonna have a very new tank. I don't want you to kind of get your feet wet with the fish, settle down, take your time. Uh, but there are some options: zoanthids, uh, mushrooms. You know, very simple, low light loving corals. Very colorful. Uh, they grow very fast. Do you have any in here? We do. We've got some green varieties here. We've got some orange. This guy here? Yeah. They're little tiny discs, like a little colonial anemone, so to speak. Now, would it, would it come this size if I order it? Order it? We sell these on a, an inch and a half disc. You know, that was one thing I noticed um, when, when I visited your facility to make a video was uh, the, how they're mounted oh, yeah. in a lot of the places. Now, those mounts, do I, get them, do I get them out of there or do I mount it? on that. So you can go two routes. Some of the, what's great about the, uh, the Carib Sea Rock, they actually make little fraggers, which are these little rocks that are cut with holes specifically for our uh, frag plugs. So you can see they can just seamlessly blend in with the rock work. It seems crazy. <laughs> it seems crazy all of this stuff, but it seems awesome. It's basic stuff. It's basic It'll stuff. Be Your wife will be talking to speak soon. So if you watch this guy, if you're watching Mark and you get all this, this is the new piece of equipment, that's a new piece of equipment. I don't know that stuff. Some of you already do, but your friends come over and they see your tank and they might be like me. So be sure to share this series so you're not over building their tank for them because Mark's leaving me out. Jordan, I asked Mark, I got my tank and I'm asking about the plumbing. He goes, <laughs> what'd you say? Figure it out. Thanks for all the information oh, today. My pleasure. I know I could go on and on and on because. Hey, come on back anytime. Well, I'm going to. And we'll talk again. I'll see you at more trade shows. We're both in Florida. Next time so, we talk to you, you're going to be a certified biologist. A certified biologist. I doubt that. You're going to be a professional plumber, a woodworker, 
a chemist. <laughs> yeah, you have to be all of those things, don't you, yep. Jordan, to, uh, to, do, to do all that. Again, thanks for your time. I'm going to go see what else I can see at the show before awesome. Mark makes me go make more videos on cool new products. Get out there. Enjoy yourself. All right. Thank you, Jordan. See you, soon. See you again.